Welcome back everybody to another Python tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to scrape data from the internet using beautiful soup and also the request library as well as parsing some of that data. So if we get started, um, you can see that I created a new virtual environment, hence why it says beautiful soup in parentheses. So if we do pip install bs4, it's going to start downloading those packages for us. And then now we're going to want to download URL lib. So if we do pip install URL lib dot request. Oops, I think I think it's a uh, URL lib three. So if we do pip install URL lib three. OK, that's installed. And actually, we're going to have to install one more, so it's going to be pip install requests. So now if we start by creating a new Python file, we can call this scraper.py. And we're going to do from url lib.request. And we're going to import request followed by url open. And then now we're going to do from beautiful soup four, import beautiful soup, and we're also going to do import requests. And we can run this now just to see. And you can see on the side right here, it finished with zero exit codes. So we should be all right to start now. So before we begin, let's find a URL that we can pull data from. And so in my case, I think I'm going to be using eBay um, just because from my experience, it's been pretty easy and say if you want to build a bot that updates a price every so often to see if there's any price changes. So if we type in, say, Travis Scott Jordan 1, this is a very popular sneaker. And if we go to our auction listing, um, you could see that all these items are up for auction and it's good because these prices are always changing so if you were to run this script every couple of days you could see that the price is changing and you know say update you if you if you wanted it at a certain price so let's copy this link now and we will say link equals and put it in a string and then now we're going to do we're going to and now we're going to create another variable called rec and we're going to say request and then insert the URL and now we're going to put headers and this is might change from time to time but I'm putting in user dash agent and then it's key value is going to be Mozilla slash 5.0. So actually I realized I said URL, um, I mean to put link. So now we can open this by saying web page equals URL open rec um, that we just did and then put read if we say print web page, we should get just a response code. Oops, so you can see that we're getting all the HTML from this site now. Uh, I thought it was going to print the response code, but I think that's only for requests. But you can see that uh, we were able to get all the HTML. Now we want to parse this into something that's a little more manageable since you see it's all on one line. It's going to be a little hard to read and, you know, see where all of our different elements are. So if we do with requests dot session as C, now we can um, create a new object called soup and it will be beautiful soup. And then we're going to pass in this web page. And we're also going to need a parser library. And in this case, we're going to use HTML5 lib. And I forgot to make that as. So now if we've run this, 
just to make sure we're not getting any errors, it's going to say couldn't find a tree builder with the features HTML5 lib. Do you need to install? So if we go back to pip now, we can just say pip install HTML5 lib. All right, so then now if we go back to run it now, you could see that we're not getting any error codes. And if we were to print out this soup item now, you could see that now we're getting all the HTML and it's actually in a lot easier form to work with. So if I drag this to the, to the front now, you can see it looks very similar to if you were just looking at a HTML document rather than it printing all in one line. So this is going to make it a lot easier for us to grab some of the elements that we want to look for. So let's now look for something on this page that we can scrape. So say if we wanted to grab this element right here, uh, we wanted to get the price. You can see that it is a span tag. Um, it has an ID of price isum underscore bid price and an item prop that is equal to price. Right off the bat, I think we're going to grab from this item prop right here. So to do that, we are going to say soup.find, and then we're going to pass in span because that's the tag that it is. And then we're going to say attributes. It is going to have item prop, and then we will say equal to price because that's how it's written on here and from this we're actually going to want to grab the content tag um, because you know it already the text here says us dollar sign 380 if we have just the price as itself it's going to be a lot easier to parse so to do that we can just say dot get underscore text and if we were to print out this whole thing now you could see that we're getting us 380 oh but i said get text we want the content so actually what you're gonna want to do is put um content in brackets and that means it's going to be pulling from content right here so it's going to print out what it's equal to so if we print that now you can see that we're going to get 380 um, and I'm sure the type is string, but we could change it to say an integer or float if we wanted to. So this element should work for every page we want. So say if we want to change the page, say if we wanted this now. So if we copy this link for that shoe and change this whole link right here. So actually I'm just going to copy and paste it. So if we say link equals in quotation marks and we put that right there and now if we run this it's saying um, none type object is not subscriptable. So I think it's because we might have sent in the wrong link. So now if I change it, let's see if we're able to fix this now. So if I run it again with um, the, the, the link that I actually grabbed from eBay, now it works. You could see before I had a different link. It was a, it said, it said pulser.ebay.com and it's, it's not exactly what we were looking for. So we fixed that by just going to the page itself. And you can see that when we go to the page, it says, you know, just eBay um, in the link. And we're able to actually pull the data from here. So say if you want to do this for a few items, you can just do, you can just compile a bunch of different links. And we'll say link underscore two equals... this 
So now we have a different shoe and say let's get one more. Link underscore three equals this shoe and we're going to grab the link and paste it in there and we will call this actually link one and we're going to create a list now and we'll say link underscore one link underscore two link oops link underscore three and we're going to create a list item and we're going to call it link and now if we do four item in link <clears throat> it's going to iterate through this whole process and we will just say i right here so now if we run this it's going to go through each of these items and print out the price so you could see 235 for the first one for the next one it's going to say 199 and then for the last one it's going to say 199 again but a different price this is 199 199.95 two two separate prices um so in terms of grabbing data from pages you can do other things so say if you want to say how many views is this item getting per hour you can just do that easily by grabbing the span tag right here saying you know styles equal to font weight bold but you might want to instead pull this entire tag right here and just say get text um, just because sometimes when you choose something really vague as like a style tag it'll conflict with a bunch of different items on here and it won't be able to grab that specific item so that's going to be it for today I'm thinking about doing a future project where I use the same exact techniques that we just did and we use it with Google News to help scrape data and we use NLP to help rank and decide what articles are the best so if that sounds interesting to you i would definitely subscribe and stay tuned because we're making relevant content about python javascript different technologies um, as well as some finance and if you're looking for something to watch definitely check out my playlist of all the python tutorials i've created thank you and enjoy the rest of your day